America's Northwoods border region. Within this land of 10,000 lakes and miles of dense timber, a hideous creature is believed to lurk. The Northwoods is probably one of the last frontiers in America. There's still a lot of places in, in this area that hasn't been set foot by man. Monsters and Mysteries exist here because it is remote. Up in the North Woods, winters are long. In times of biting cold and isolation, a devouring monster is believed to come forth. It's terrorized native people for generations. Growing up, I was told, like, don't go outside, the Windigo will get you. Among the traditions of the northern Algonquin tribes is the Wendigo, a monster that can seize hold of a person to carry out its hunger for human flesh. Many Native Americans fear even talking about this Wendigo. And even the mention of the name will let the Wendigo find out where you are, and it will open you up to be possessed by this Wendigo. The most famous case of a Wendigo possession took place in 1879. In the deep woods outside of Edmonton, Alberta, Swift Runner, a Cree Indian, was a trapper and a guide. He had left town the previous autumn with his wife, six children, and his mother. But when Swift Runner returned in spring, he was alone. Swift Runner came into a nearby village telling this heartbreaking I tale. Watch, I had to watch them starve to death. Of his family just... being killed by starvation. And that he was the only survivor. My whole family, gone. It wasn't hard to understand a family falling victim to a brutal winter. To even not... Yet something was suspicious about Swift Runner. Think of this he was a, a strapping man, and he came into town weighing over 200 pounds. It didn't look like somebody who had just weathered a terrible winter. He wasn't malnourished, didn't look like he was starving. He looked healthier than ever. After a few nights, it became clear that something was wrong. He started having night terrors, screaming in his sleep. I am the Wendigo. Villagers alerted the police. Swift Runner actually guided them back to his winter cabin. When they got there, that's when they saw the true horror. Human skulls were scattered around, many bones, some of which had been snapped in half and the marrow inside had been drained. They had never seen anything like it. Swift Runner had killed his entire family shooting them, hitting them with an axe, strangling, and then eating most of their bodies. Right up until the moment the noose was on his neck, Swift Runner swore the evil spirit of the Wendigo had possessed him and twisted him into a cannibal killer. When he was on the gallows, Swift Runner himself said, I am no longer a man. 